Great. Well, everyone listening, I just want to firstly apologize because I am in the mountains of Lisbon with very bad Wi-Fi. So I apologize if I break in and out, but um, Macek and I have been working on this and uh, I've somewhat thrown him in the deep end because he might have to take over. All right, it looks like we're recording, so let's kick off, uh, Clark and Macek. Um, Looking forward to what's coming down the track. Thanks, Colin. Uh, which town hall is this? Oh, 54, I think we're up to. Is, is Scott on today? We should be asking him, but I don't think he's, he's attending today. But 54, I believe. Great. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for... <laughs> yeah, Scott. No. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, the few weeks ago when I was in Poland and we had our big workshop, I stayed in Poland and Maciek and I basically got locked up into a room and I drove him absolutely insane, asking him every single minutia detail about Platform OS. Uh, and from that, we developed a more visual roadmap uh, based upon all the different products and um, areas that we work in Platform OS and what those focuses need to be for Q3. So this is something uh, in a very simplistic level that we wanted to, just, to share. You know, this is us mapping out where our different products are. <coughs> um, and in the past, you know, we've just posted a whole bunch of text and data, but we wanted people to get a more visual understanding of where all the different elements of Platform OS are. And obviously our core product is what you guys build on. It's something that we constantly work really hard to develop. Um, our CLI, which is our marketplace kit, um, the modules based upon the feedback from everyone that we've received uh, of, you know, wanting to have more modules uh, out of the box. Um, and Yeah. Clark, we're really struggling, I think, with the sound at the moment, uh, as, you, we, as you predicted. Yes, I, I think we lost you, Clark. Um, let's see if he comes back just briefly. Hello? Yeah, just Maybe. try try again, Clark, and we'll see how we go. Otherwise, we might, might need to pass the baton to, to Macek, but see how you go. So we're going through the website. Um, yes. Community site box, Scott, it's still very provide a level of support that we want to ensure that our channel partners are receiving. Next slide, we check. Based upon that, um, the feedback I received from a lot of the channel partners was that the front end user experience was just not at the level expected and required in this day and age environment. So much uh, and I sat down and we just sat down with the team to go through what that means. Um, with Maybe I will take over right now. Uh, so uh, what Clark wanted to finish was that we sat down and we identified the things which was uh, the biggest pain points uh, for our partners. And the main thing that we identified was the fact that it's not really possible right now to use di GraphQL directly. You usually always need to go through the layer of liquid in order to provide authorization. But of course, you can use GraphQL GUI serve to develop GraphQL queries on your local host and you don't need to do any liquid to do it. And uh, the feedback was that people would like to use it also for uh, their end products. 
uh, right now, if you wanted to do Scrap Cloudflare, as you know, usually you need to create a page, which is actually liquid, and most likely you need to provide authorization policy to make sure that an unauthorized person will not be able to see the sensitive data. And we're thinking about how we can actually add another layer of authorization, which would not involve liquid it will be some other way of configuration it which would allow you to use graphical dialect directly which will also be very be beneficial for for example mobile app uh, development or single page applications and another point was uh, the graphical subscription so we get many questions uh, about it and graphical subscriptions allow you to uh, get live notifications right now if something changes, you need to use polling mechanism, which is really asking the server every few seconds to see if something changed. GraphQL subscription allows you to just subscribe to the GraphQL endpoint and you will be notified whenever something changes. It is way more efficient and it really becomes a standard. So we hear you. And this is something that uh, we will be working on. It's really very strictly connected to the first point, which is direct access to GraphQL, because it doesn't really make sense to implement GraphQL subscriptions without having this authorization layer in the first place. And the last but not least is something that we already were bringing about, uh, which is Elasticsearch views. And our efforts goes into making sure that we are feature compatible between models, which uses database, and customizations, which uses Elasticsearch endpoint, and same for users, which uses database and people, which is prerequisite to go for it. The idea is that before we implement this advanced uh, way of allowing you to determine your own index for Elasticsearch, we want to make sure that you want to be forced to do it. So it should be advanced options. It's uh, for complex searches and things like this. But if you don't need it for your simple website, you shouldn't be forced to learn yet another layer. Uh, that's why it's so important for us to make sure that uh, we bring models and users uh, to the same level as customizations that people right, uh, are right now. Only then we will start working on Elasticsearch views in, in the form we envision it. Black, uh, are you there? I am. Awesome. Over to you then. <laughs> uh, the next stage was the modules, and the feedback was, you know, Platform OS started uh, with marketplaces, and we should be able to develop a, a great module for it, and we agree. And Adam's always hopped on on the four Ps, which <laughs> right there, we thought we were, we were Adam in, in spirit. Um, product marketplaces and our thousand dollar Apple stand and places and projects. So Machek identified that the places module was gonna be the first step in our marketplace module. Over to you Machek. Yes, that's correct. So uh, we, we heard your feedback and the feedback was that you would like to have more, oh, sorry. Uh, you, you would like more code, something that the code that actually works so, uh, more like a product which can be sold or tweaked. And Marketplace module is a great candidate for it. It's a very complex feature, so uh, there will be a lot of code really to get inspiration from. It's also a great test of modules themselves because uh, our goal to, to create Marketplace module is to create a lot of smaller modules which would be compatible with each other and will work together. So example of such models can be payments, which we already have and it's open source, it can be geolocation. Right now we have it in a form of a module in, on our example site, which is examples.platformwise.com, by the way. And it, it will be uh, final proof that the modules actually are ready uh, and you can c come up with your own modules and then sell them to your own community. So um, we will aim to do very minimal UI because UI is something that uh, is customizable of anyway and this is the area <laughs> in which the big differences are between first clients work. Uh, but we will focus 
on making the backend highly configurable. So it should be easy to, to modify forms, add your own fields and determine business rules for payments. And at the same time, you should be able to just build any UI you need to, on top of it, this module. So this is something that will take us some time, uh, but we believe this effort is well uh, needed. And yeah. Great. The next thing uh, we'll be focusing on uh, is UX improvements. And we've been listening to you in terms of uh, what makes it hard to use platform OS and Kata has been doing a great job during the research. And one of the key things uh, that we've heard from you is that our naming is not ideal and it actually confuses uh, many people. Like we, uh, we are a platform, but yet we, in our main things include marketplace uh, name, for example, which is because of the history, but doesn't really apply to us anymore. And that's why we've been identifying the key things which would need renaming. And of course, Marketplace Builder and Marketplace Kit are on top of this list. The Marketplace Builder has been already renamed to App thanks to your feedback and thank you very much for contributing. And Marketplace Kit will be shortly renamed to Post CLI. And we've also gathered some feedback from you that couple of things within Marketplace Builder, which is now app, uh, can be shortened or just made clearer. And the best candidates to, to change right now would be graph queries, which will become GraphQL, form configurations, which would just become forms, custom model types will become model schema, and user profile types will become user profile schema. And another part of UX improvements is uh, still in the research. Uh, so currently there are surveys which Katar was sending to you. So if you would uh, find a moment to, to fulfill it and, and just provide us your insight and thoughts about what else was making it hard for you to work with Platform OS, what was your aha moment, like something that you wished you have known sooner because it would save you some time, please, please contribute uh, and we'll make sure to implement this implement as soon as possible. Obviously, we'll continue working on improving our existing features. A uh, couple of examples uh, from recent improvements would be the nested customizations. And thank you, Adam Quick, for reporting the CX issues. And, and all your feedback really is processed and, and gathered. And eventually, we hope to um, implement all of your suggestions. Um, so please keep providing your, your thoughts. It's very valuable for us. And obviously part of UX improvements is writing more examples, more documentation, and the repositories are open source. So you can just grab the code and use it any way you want. And for documentation, Fred Diana is doing a great job and posting uh, weekly updates on, on our Slack channel. So I, I won't bring it up here, but Please know that all of this is happening. Over to you, Paul. Technical support. Now, what I remember when I first had an initial discussion, the, the feedback generally comes is that we love Platform OS because of the people and the support that we get. Um, and we don't ever want to change that. We provide the level of support we do because that's who we are. However, the way we are providing it now is ineffective, both from our development team, as well as for our channel partners. You know, pinging someone on Slack is just, it's, it's not the most effective way and we don't have a way to track what that looks like. So right now for Q3, we want to improve our technical support, ensuring that we are responding uh, effectively and getting that data and ensuring that we then are updating all our documentation for that. Um, and I think that's really important. We, we don't ever want to get to a stage where we let that drop. It's, it, as I said, it's really important to us that we ensure that our channel partners aren't left in the lurch. Your success will equal our success. Um, so it's important that we are all getting a bit of the pie. So for us in Q3, we're gonna uh, be changing the way we provide that technical support. 
Um, what that will look like will be in development, and obviously we'll share that with you, but we definitely don't want that support to drop. We want it to improve. Um, that's our intentions. And our next point is DevOps. So in, in the past, I've always stated that about 50% of our development team's time is spent on DevOps, and that is still very much the case. As much as we would love to jump in the newest, coolest, nicest, fun, funnest thing, the reality is we need to ensure that this product continues to be reliable, continues to do great performance, continues to have the security that is, is required. Um, so there's a number of DevOps uh, improvements that we're constantly working on. And that includes, you know, what Macheck went through before, the UX improvements. It's like, yeah, we could jump on all these new things, but the reality is you've told us a whole bunch of this other stuff doesn't work or it works in a really weird way. And the reality is we want to clean that up before we just provide new products. So these are the new DevOps components that we're working on. Over to you, Macheck. Yes. So, um, it, it's very really boring stuff. This is actually one of the reasons why you choose platform OS so you don't have to deal with it yourself. But when we talk about that, we talk about every single component up to date uh, for performance, for example, but also for other reasons like new features. And uh, this includes stuff like databases, Elasticsearch, caching, even web servers, application servers, OS itself. Like, all of the different stuff, we need to make sure that we have no single point of failure and that we have heard an answer for everything. And on top of it, everything is automated because we don't have only stacked in new region and we want to keep new regions, but we also have multiple stacks within a single region, which means that whatever we do for one stack, it should be replicable automatically and available on every other server, right? Because you never want the situation in which one feature is available in Oregon, but it's not available in Sydney or in London. So whenever we write it, it requires an additional microservice or component like data import or back upload assets or PDF generation, we need to make sure that this is also something that we add to our automation pipeline that is going to all the tasks, not just one, that we buffer logs uh, and we have proper alarm set up and auto healing and all of these things. Um, and this is quite some effort to make sure that everything is stable and, and reliable. And our goal is to, to just not show you how complex it is because if everything is working, like how hard it can be, right? And it's it's our goal to make sure that you think it's simple, but just wanted to share with you that, that there are a couple of moving pieces here and it actually requires quite a lot of effort to, to have set everything up and running every day. Yep, over to you, Clark. Great, thanks for checking. Uh, that's basically our roadmap for Q3. I know it might seem brief, but you know, the GraphQL subscription and our marketplace modules are just two enormous pieces of work that we are hoping that once we build and get in development, that the front end user experience will improve significantly. That will help uh, you to build what you're building up significantly faster as well as the marketplace module to be able to access that and utilize that and build what you need to build as well, utilizing that module. Uh, so based upon that, as well as doing all our technical support and getting all the DevOps stuff in the background up and running and ensuring it continually performs at the level that we demand it to be, um, this is our Q3. Any questions from the community? Questions, no questions, doesn't sound. Well, look, uh, once again, you know, as I've always stated, uh, 
I'm always on Slack. I'm always love to hear feedback from people. So if anyone does have any questions later when they absorb all this or they watch this town hall uh, later on, uh, I'd love to, to get your feedback. Um, and if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. We will always be here to provide the support that you guys need. Thank you so much. Well done, Clark and, and uh, Maciek. Thank you very much for that. And I know, Clark, you've spent a lot of time in Poland uh, working with the team and, and getting your head around everything. And uh, it's great to see the results coming out of that. So thank you for your efforts. And um, if there are no more questions, um, we will look to close out this session. Any, any final, final call for questions? I think we're all good. Well, great. Thank you very much. Good morning, good night, and good evening. And um, thank you for attending today. And as always, this will be um, uh, this recording will be placed on the town hall page for uh, for on demand viewing later. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone, as well. Yep. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.